Hi, I'm Anthony from Learning to Play the Guitar. This video is another video in my series of Jumping into Jazz, and it's going to feature the song Cold Duck Time by Eddie Harris. This song was first featured on the album Swiss Time Movement, recorded at the 1969 Montreux Jazz Festival. The song itself features a 12 bar form based around the chords F7, B flat 7, D flat major 7, and an E flat major 7, which acts as a turnaround going back to the start of the form. So it's a fairly simple tune to play. In this tune I'm going to show you how to play the melody, also known as the head, plus some variations on the chords that you can play in the song, and I'm also going to show you some scales and modes you can use, plus some arpeggios to improvise over the tune, and I'll give you an example solo at the end of this lesson too. So first up here we're going to look at the melody of the tune, which is based around the F minor pentatonic scale. So I hope you're enjoying the video so far. Please like and subscribe and ring that bell button if you want to receive notifications of when I upload a new video. You can also check out my books and more lessons on my website, learningtoplaytheguitar.net. Okay, the melody here for Cold Duck Time is based around the F minor pentatonic scale. So there's various patterns of the F minor pentatonic scale you could use to play this melody. I've decided to play F minor pentatonic pattern four based here starting, say the F would be on fret eight. And we've got this pattern here. I'll put the tab up, of course. I'm based around here because it sort of makes most of the notes fairly easy to access. And so I'll just run through it fairly slowly. And I'll jump over to there for that A flat. And then we'll go back. Cross over. And then it just repeats. Jump to fret six with the A flat, little funky low note there, and then, and then the end bit, same, same sort of notes. A long A flat there with my second finger, a long F, and then, bing, and then you're back to the start. So it's a pretty easy melody. Next up here, we're going to look at some chords. So while it goes between F and B flat seven multiple times in the song, I'm going to give you some examples of here how you can vary these chords in various voicings on the guitar. Okay, here I'm going to show you multiple ways of playing F7, B flat 7, and a couple of variations around the D flat major 7 and the E flat major 7 chords. So first up here, the two basic shapes you can start off with from an F7 chord, I'm basically using what would be, say, the C chord shape with a little finger chucked in becomes a C7 now, down there. If we slide that thing all the way up to the bass note, there's now on fret 8. The middle four strings there, we're now playing a very funky sounding F7, which is the first chord I play in that demo. A thing to take note here is we want to mute the top E string and the bottom E string. So I'm muting the top E string with my thumb on the top here, and I'm muting the bottom E string by leaning over with my first finger slightly there. Hopefully you can see that on camera. Throughout, I just started with this basic rhythm, which I copied off the backing track I'm using, which is down, up, down, down sort of rhythm. And we're going to recycle that for every chord. So then the next chord will be B flat seven. The basic one I'm using here is the B flat seven bar chord located here at fret six. And the magic of this from the F seven one I just played is that we can change the chords while keeping this third finger in the same spot. So this third finger will stay here on fret eight on the A string. So F seven to the B flat seven. So nice and easy. Change it backwards and forwards. So if you want to keep it really simple for the entire tune as a rhythm guitar player, you can just play that F7, that B flat 7 backwards and forwards, and it works. But however, that can get a bit boring if you're jamming the song for 10-15 minutes, as I have done in bands in the past. So then the other way to do that is to vary your variations of F7 and B flat 7, which is what I'm going to show you here. So instead of just playing F7, we can now play a thing called F9. 
which is the James Brown chord used in Sex Machine and lots of other funk tunes. For me, the ninth chord is like a jazzy version of an F7 chord, adding in what's called the ninth scale degree, which is this G note here on the B string on fret eight. So it's like the triangle with one, two, three fingers lying either the third finger down, or some people you can also lie the little finger in there, all the way down through. You don't necessarily have to use one, two, three, four, five strings. You can also get away with just the middle four, one, two, three, four, as well. That works just as well. Continuing through the little sequence I played in the demo, we're now going to jump to a variation of B flat seven. Instead of doing the whole B flat seven chord, I'm now just gonna use what's called a half bar. So I'm gonna throw the bass notes because they can get a bit muddy in a band. So as a guitar player, you can lighten things up by just doing the bottom four strings, or the four treble strings. Those four strings. So basically now I've got one finger barring fret six, the second finger is now hitting what's known as the major third of the chord, a D note there on fret seven on the G string. And you can do a little funk thing here where you can do like a little light hammer with the second finger. To get that sort of sound. So now going back to F7 variations again, the next one I do is a thing called F13. So it's basically now another seventh chord jazzed up further by adding the 13th scale degree, which in this case is this D note down the bottom here. The whole chord can be this, which is basically that ninth chord shape with my little finger now sticking on fret 10 on the bottom here. It can be a little bit awkward to play. And again, you can throw away the bass note and just play it this way as well, which works fine. So four strings doing it that way, which is what I do in the demo. So then we're gonna go back to B flat again, a variation of that. Now we're gonna do a B flat 13. Again, now based on the same shape we had before, we're just now gonna add my third finger here to fret eight on the B string, which is a G note. And that's the 13th, which is again, a jazzed up version of a B flat seven chord in this case. So now one more time back to the F7, filling in the basic progression of the tune. This F7, just a stock standard F7 bar chord, second finger's on holiday, one of those guys. And following that, we're gonna jump back to F13 again, but we're now gonna add my little finger down here on the bottom on fret eight, which is the ninth scale degree, so we've got a 13-9 chord, which is that sort of cool, funky sound. And then in the sequence of the chords of the song, then we're gonna jump to a D flat major seven. So in my demo, I just use this shape, and I also use the same shape for the E flat major seven as well by sliding up there. So I'll also show you some other variations of these two major seven chords, which are jazzed up major chords, if you like. So another easy way you can play a major seven chord is if we had to say D flat major here, fret four, and the triple six in the middle. If we then add that guy there, very awkward to play, of course, on fret eight, that is the major seven note. So to make that easier to play and lighter and funkier, we can just do that. So that's D flat major seven. And then, oh yeah, slide that up two frets. E flat major seven, that works quite well. Another little cool one, maybe just one more on these, is the six nine chord. It has the six in the ninth scale degree in it. John Mayer uses this chord in um, Wide Georgia. And so basically we're playing this shape. There's a few variations of this, but this is the basic one in this position. And so for me, it's like I'm playing a G chord, but I'm playing a bar behind it and this finger is down, down here on the uh, A string. So in tab we have a um, four, three, three, four, four, double finger sort of down the bottom for that sort of shape. Um, so that's the root, the third, the sixth, the um, ninth, and then that's the fifth again. So D flat major nine, and you can take it up to D flat, uh, E flat major nine. Another word on that one as well, if we go back, more, there's always more, D flat six nine. Add this little guy in here, D flat major nine, ooh, jazzy. So you can sort of take those on and off, a little bit of fun there, and same for E flat, of course, major nine and the six nine version. So there's lots of little ideas here you can mix and match in coming up with rhythm guitar parts for this song, and obviously you can use these chords in other songs as well. Obviously those dominant seven ones work really well in blues tunes as well. Now here we're gonna look at some scales and modes that you can use to improvise over the chord changes, including F mixolydian for the F7 chord, B flat mixolydian for the B7 chord, and for the D flat major 7 chord, a D flat major scale, and for the E flat major chord, an E flat major scale. So here we're going to look at some of the scale patterns that can be used to play over the changes of the song. The first thing I might as well mention really quickly again is the F minor pentatonic scale will work 
good old pattern one of F minor pentatonic down here at fret one. Obviously you can play the same thing as the basic pattern all the way up at fret 13. And any of those notes will fit over the entire tune and work quite well and give it sort of a bluesy sound. So that's quite fine, but if you want to get a bit more um, jazzy and interesting with it, we're going to try and now play mixolydian modes over each of the two dominant seven chords. So when we have F7, we're going to play F mixolydian stuff. When we have B flat 7, we're going to play the B flat mixolydian mode. So what is a mixolydian mode? It's basically a major scale with a flattened seventh. So the idea of a flattened seventh is if we had, say, B flat 7, the idea of this flattened 7 is this A flat note. So normally B flat major would be this sound with an A natural. But that note will clash weirdly with that note from the B flat 7 chord. So to make that fit, we're going to change that A to an A flat. So we have this sound. And that's all there is to it. So first off, I'm going to show you some basic patterns that I'm going to use for some exercises, which then I'll incorporate into the solo at the end of this demo. So the first thing I'm going to start off with is an idea of F mixolydian starting around fret 8. So the root note is actually here, fret 8 on the A string, that's the F for the F7 chord we had before. But now I'm going to run through us the mode F mixolydian in this location, but I might as well jump down here starting from actually what is the C note on the E string. So the pattern here in the tab, 8, 10, 11, 8, 10, 7, 8, 10, 7, 8, 10, 8, 10, 11, 8, 10, 11. There's a little string jump there. So then the other one, just to compare the basic B flat mixolydian mode scale for the B flat chord is now actually starting on the root note here, which is uh, fret six B flat on the E string. Now, this pattern is six, eight, five, six, eight, five, six, eight, five, seven, eight. I'll do a little jump, six, eight, nine, six, eight, ten. Bonus note up there if you like. Backwards. Giving you that sound for the B flat chord. So just sticking with those two for the moment, there is a two other scales, which I'll jump to a bit later for the other D flat and E flat major chords at the end. But for now, just sticking with those two, I'm going to do some little exercises. So now the first little scale exercise I want to do here is playing one octave F mixolydian, one octave of B flat mixolydian, following the chord changes as you would hear them in the song. So first off, in that demo here, we just had running up the scale of F mixolydian. 8, 10, 7, 8, 10, 7, 8, 10, and B flat. 8, 10, 7, 8, 10, 8, 9, 11. Another version of F mixolydian starting on fret 10 for F. 10, 12, 10, 11, 13, 10, 11, 13. High B flat mixolydian at 15. 15, 17, 15, 16, 18, 15, 16, 18. So see if you can get that to work smoothly without stopping um, with a drum machine maybe starting at 80 to 100 bpm then speed that up to track speed there which is about 125 for example so next we're going to try playing through these modes stepping in thirds versus going straight through the scale so that means we're going to basically skip a note up in the scale and then jump back a note. So we end up with this sound, so the F mixolydian. That sort of sound, skipping through one note forward and then one note back. B flat starts on eight seven. Double eight there, and I'm gonna jump my first finger for the double tens for the high version of F. High fifteens for the B flat. So that makes sense, so I'm sort of breaking that pattern up into those little components and that will actually follow the chord changes again. Another way you can muck around with these patterns is to play them uh, three steps up the scale and one step back. So the idea of this from F again, 8, 10, 7, 10, 8, 7, 7, 8, and then B flat, hey, it's the same note, so B flat, 8, 10, 7, 10 etc. 10, 12 for the high version of F. 15, 17 for the high version of B flat. So the little patterns are sort of drill and learn and you're trying to make them smoothly connect as the chords change in the backing track behind you or if you've got a looper you can create those chord changes yourself. Yeah. 
So that's all well and good, but the challenge is only playing eighth notes. We only get to play eight notes in the bar before the chord changes. So if you want to play more notes, you've basically got to play faster through the mode or the scale pattern. And so the challenge here, especially at 125, is to then jump into playing triplets, which is quite fiddly, but it does sound really cool. So a little bit of shred happening here. And so the idea of that triplet speed is we're having one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, groups of three over every beat. And that allows us to play all the way through the octave versus just two thirds of the way through. So the F1 now will have the whole, the whole F to F octave. And the B flat will be the same. You notice how I had to do a little side step with the double A with my first finger. Which makes that end much easier to play, I suppose. And then, then the other one, again, just going through the demo of the same concept, the higher version all the way through the octave in third steps. And the 15s for the B flat. So that little idea. And you can also try playing these backwards, which is also another great exercise. So then when we get to the D flat major chord, we have D flat major, that makes sense, and E flat major would be the E flat major scale. So D flat major in this position, fret nine is D flat, nine, 11, eight, nine, 11, eight, 10, 11, eight, 10, 11, nine, 10, eight, nine, 11. E flat's the same thing starting at fret 11. Is that sort of sound there. These also can be played in different positions. In my little um, demo of exercises, I'm going to just show you a little hint of D flat major one octave starting here on fret four. It's actually this pattern four, six, three, four, six, three, five, six, and the E flat, same thing, but six, eight, five, six, eight, five, seven, eight. And so for all these scales and modes, they can be played in various positions all over the neck, which is something to work towards. <laughs> So with the D flat and the E flat major scales, we can also practice that same concept of going through in third, one and two and three and four and, and the same pattern. For those two scales, or you can try doing triplets. And that sort of thing. So beyond using scales and modes here, you can also play arpeggios based around the chord changes of the tune. the arpeggios we're going to use ninths because it makes it a little bit jazzy and more interesting. So here we have the first one which is F9 for the F7 chord. Just that one and then we could say jump to a B flat 9 arpeggio and so forth like that. And the other one would be say a D flat major 9 arpeggio because it's a major 9 chord. E flat, same thing. And finally, here's my example of a solo I created, which combines the scales, the modes, and the arpeggios all together to create an effective solo. Here is the solo I just played, broken down and explaining what's going on. So for the F7 chord, the first chord in the sequence here, I'm just basically playing the F7 arpeggio. And that's the F7 arpeggio. And then we grab the octave, which is the F10. Fretted note there, and then I'm gonna play a little melody going into B flat, mixolydian sort of modal stuff, I suppose. Repeating ideas are always very effective, sort of repeating the same phrase twice here in that bar back to an F7 arpeggio. Then I jump to the jazzy ninth, which is fret eight there, and then down to the six. A little bit of bending, Jeff Beckish sort of stuff maybe, slightly. So I'm bending all the way from uh, the A flat note to the B flat note, which is the seventh to the root on the B flat chord underneath that. So after that little bending melodic bit, I go a little bit into uh, Tony Iommi sort of licks from Paranoid uh, using the F blues scale. So here we got eight, nine, eight, and then into the F blues bit over the F7 chord. A little slide there in the middle of it, but yeah, nothing too crazy there. That's just stepping through 
F minor pentatonic pattern 4 to pattern 3. Then we jump back to an arpeggio for the B flat 7 chord. This is a B flat 7 arpeggio, but the lower one, and then I'll do it again, recycling that little rhythm from the previous bar, so connecting things rhythmically is also a good thing to take note of. And then two little notes out of the Mixolydian B flat mode there. Then I'm going to chuck in the quick triplet, but starting on the A over the F chord. Uh, and then just doing those triplets. That was over the F, that was F mixolydian stuff technically. Then we go B flat mixolydian just a little bit on the end. Ending on the D, which is the third of the B flat seven chord, making it sound a bit jazzy. Then I do an arpeggio again, but we're going to do it now over the D flat major nine chord with a little step in from the, the seventh to the root. So that's basically the arpeggio going backwards using seven root, fifth, third, root, seven, fifth, third. So it got the root and the seventh next to order each other, which gives it like a nice cascading sound. Final arpeggio, we slide down to E flat major, seven, E flat major, nine, straight up from the exercises. There you go. And then we've got an eight. So then we have the slidey thing, a little bit inspired by Steve Vai here from the fret eight. I'm going to jump to the fret 10, which is basically now going to be F mixolydian on the end, ending on the 7th. 